Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 2.4. We're going to introduce least common multiples, and we often refer to it as LCM, a little abbreviation for least common multiple. Let's uh, redefine multiples. We've discussed it before. But a multiple is the product of an integer and the natural numbers. And if we recall the natural numbers, those are our counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So let's look at the multiples of 8. If I want to find the multiples of 8, I essentially just take 8 times my counting numbers. 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3, 8 times 4, and so on. And I could continue that on forever if I wanted, but I don't have that kind of time, and neither do you. So let's look at multiples of 12. Well, 12 times 1, 12 times 2, 12 times 3, 12 times 4, and so on. Now, if we list the multiples, and we want to find the least common multiple. Well, let's first find common multiples. And as you can see, I underline a few of these here because these values oh, excuse me, are common to both. These values are common to both. So which one is the least common multiple? Well, we can see the first one that is common in both would be the 24s. So 24 is the least common multiple of 8 my LCM. So I'd say my LCM is 24. But as the numbers get larger, writing out all these multiples can be very tedious. In the previous section, I asked you to write the multiples of 13 and 17 and 19. And those can be uh, kind of troublesome as the numbers get larger. So let's look at another way to find the least common multiple. Essentially, there's three steps here. And when we Put it into words. It's sometimes a little more difficult than actually seeing how it's worked out. So we'll show you a couple examples. Finding the least common multiple, the first thing we want to use is prime factorization. That's our first step. Take the numbers we have and use a factor tree. Break them down into their prime numbers. Then identify any unique prime numbers that appear. Let's say one value has one of our numbers, when we factor it down, has a prime of 2, but the other ones don't. That 2 is a unique prime number. So identify those primes. Then identify any repeated ones. Well, if I have a 3 in one of my values when I do its prime factorization, I have a 3 in another, those are repeated factors. Maybe I have 3 squared in another. So what I want to do is Take the greatest power. If I have 1 with 3 and 1 with two threes, 3 squared is going to be the greatest power of that respected factor. And then put them all together. The product of those factors will be the least common multiple. And I know that may sound confusing in explanation, but let's actually look at an example. We'll see it's not so bad. So here I have a list of numbers, 6, 12, and 42. And I want to find the least common multiple, the LCM. So the first thing I do is I use prime factorization. I just factor it down. 6 is 2 times 3. Those are prime numbers. I can't break them down any further. 12 is 3 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. 42, well, I know. Some of its larger multiples, 7 times 6. And 6 is 2 times 3. So now I'm ready to move on to step 2. I use my prime factorization. Identify the unique prime factors. What unique means is it only appears in one of the numbers. Well, I see all of them have a 2, so 2 is not unique. I see all of them have a 3. 3 is not unique. 7 is unique. 7 is the only unique factor. So I'm going to write that right here, 7. And we're going to multiply that once we find the rest of them. So I identified the unique factor. It is part of my least common multiple. Now I identify any repeated factors. Well, we see that 2 repeats in all of them. This one has a 2, and that one has a 2, and this one has a 2. Use the one of the greatest power. Well, the greatest power of 2, this only has 1. This has 2. That's 2 squared. That's where that 4 came from, 2 squared. This only has 1. The greatest power is 2. So I'm going to say 2 squared. Now, they each have a 3. Well, the greatest power of each one having just one 3, well, the greatest would be 1. So I have to have at least one 3. 
So now that I've identified the least common multiples, 7 and 2 squared and 3, I can put them all together. I can multiply them. And I'm going to get, well, 4 times 3 is 12 times 7 is going to give me 84. So <clears throat> the least common multiple of all of these numbers is going to be 84. So that's not too bad. Can you imagine if I wrote all the uh, multiples of 6 up to 84? That's quite a few. So writing it out as its prime factors, identifying any unique ones, and then the ones that do repeat take their highest power. Let's do one more example. And we see the numbers are getting larger. So you can imagine writing out those multiples would be pretty busy work. So 24, I look at that and I say, hey, I know that 24 is going to be 6 times 4, which is 2 times 3, which is, and 4 is 2 times 2. So essentially, I have 2 cubed times 3. That's the same as 24. 32, well, to save time, I know that that would be divisible by 2 five times. It has 2 to the fifth power as its factors. It would break down to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 39, well, the first thing I identify is it's divisible by 3 using my rules of divisibility. So that's one of its factors. And 3 goes into that 13, a very large prime, right? or relatively speaking. I look at 40, and I know that that's 4 and 10. And this is two, 4 is 2 squared, so I'll just write it as 2 squared. And 10 is 2 times 5. So 40 is the same as 3 factors of 2 times 5. I'll write it right here. 3 factors of 2 times 5. So now I have all these factors. And I'll rewrite this as 2 cubed times 3. And now I'm going to use this, identify any unique factors. Well, this has 2 and 3. This has a 2. This has a 3. This has a 2 and a 3 and a 5, 13. I see that this is the only one with 13, and this is the only one with 5. These are unique factors. The 2s and 3s, well, they repeat along the way. So I have a 13 times a 5. Those are unique factors. Now I'm going to look at the repeated factors. Well, I know some of them had 2s and some of them had 3s. What are the highest powers of the 2s? Well, I see 2 cubed here, 2 to the fifth here, and only 2 cubed here. 5 is greater, so 2 to the fifth. And then we see those 3s that weren't unique. I have 1, 3 here, 1, 3 here. Well, again, I only have 1, 3 in any of the numbers. So I have the highest power of 1 for this 3. If I multiply these together, you can imagine the size of that number, 13 times 5 times 2 to the fifth, which again was 32 times 3. This is going to be a huge number, but it is the least common multiple. And if you want for practice, you can go ahead and multiply that together. All right, so this has been 2.4 part 1. Thank you for watching.